Yeah. It is time. You will not survive. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is the PlayStation Lifestyle Underground Podcast. We are the greatest and the only unofficial podcast, PlayStationLifestyle.net. I am Hugo Stiglitz. You can find me on PSN as Hugo Stiglitz underscore 420. And I got two other guys with me today. You guys want to say hello? Yeah, sure. I'm Steve Bitto. I'm the community manager for PlayStation Lifestyle. Uh, you can find me on the PlayStation Lifestyle forums as Steven Bitto. And you can find me on uh, PlayStation Network as Tyler X Durden. And I'm Brian Mashala. You can find me on the forums and in the comments sections as Brian Machala. And on PlayStation Network, Xbox, Wii U, if anyone still plays that, I am CloudStripe768. Awesome. Um, lately, I've been playing Far Cry 4. I've been doing the uh, Valley of the Yetis uh, DLC. Um, also playing a lot of Project Cars, as always. Same thing with uh, Sebastian Loeb, Rally Evo, and Drive Club. Uh, I've been playing Battlefield 4 a little bit. Rocket League, of course. Um, Dying Light, still playing the following DLC. Uh, I finished up Just Cause 3. And on the Vita, I've still been uh, playing some Uncharted on Remote Play. Right now I'm on number 2, very close to getting the Platinum Trophy. And I've also been playing uh, Badlands still. Um, yeah, that's about it for me. What have you guys been playing lately? Um, I, uh, I've been playing a lot. I played, um, the entire, uh, Game of Telltale's Game of Thrones series. And, um, it was okay. I don't know if you guys watched the show, but it, I believe it takes place between seasons three and four. And this show is on season six now, I think. So... It wasn't that impactful because most of the main characters who are from the show, you already know what happens to them, and you know what's going on with that character, so you know that these events really aren't, you know, meaningful to them. So huh. I, I, you know, like I felt it's kind of cool because I think these characters in the game are actually from the books, if I understand correctly. Hmm. However, the stories as they intertwine with the other main characters like seems really insignificant because we already know where those other characters are going to be you know what i mean so like i already know have you guys watched it will i spoil anything if i say something um i haven't so i might someday so i'd rather not have any spoilers all right i won't say anything specific but if a certain character is you know not, you know they're not going to be able to help you because of what happens next in their storyline. You know, they lose power or gain power or whatever. Like you kind of know where that's going to go. So it kind of changes like the what you say, what you do, and how it impacts the gameplay, which is so crucial to Telltale Games, you know. When you already know, you know, it says they're going to remember that, you already know that doesn't matter. So it's like, I don't know. It loses some of its luster that way. Although there, there is one thread in the game that could be important for the show. Um, well, important for the books, and then ultimately important for the show. We don't know yet, but it was hmm. that part was interesting. But other than that, it, it really it really was only just okay. And I think they're making a second season, too, which I don't know how that's going to work. Huh. Yeah, that was one thing I did like about the Walking Dead Telltale game, is that it really had nothing to do with the, uh, the, the series. The TV show, right? This is all standalone thing. So when I actually did watch the series, nothing was spoiled um, at all, which is cool because I like both. Like I, I mean, I only played the first season, and I've watched all of uh, you know the Walking Dead TV series up until uh, you know the one that aired the other night. But um, yeah, when I actually played the game, I had not watched a single thing of the Walking Dead, so it was cool that nothing was spoiled at all. So, I don't know. I'll probably avoid the Game of Thrones game then if it spoils anything. I might watch that series at some day. I'd wait to play it until you're about at that point in the show. Yeah. 
That's the best Makes way sense. to play it. Damn. All right. Um. Cool. You been playing anything else lately, or? Um. Not really. I um. I actually traded because I really don't like Call of Duty very much, and I had gotten a free copy um of Black Ops Three. Unrelated to what I do for PlayStation Lifestyle, obviously. And I traded it on Craigslist for um, Star Wars Battlefront and the Star Wars Classic Series. So oh, yeah. I haven't really played Battlefront yet. I actually just downloaded everything. But I was just, as you can probably see, I'm playing Super Star Wars now just as a, you know, blast from the past type thing. But, you know, those are those are pretty fun. I'll probably play those up until, um, what's it, uh, Ratchet and Clank comes out on uh, April 12th. Yeah, that's right. That is coming up pretty soon. <laughs> It'll actually be my first Ratchet and Clank game. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I, I did try a little bit of All for One, but that was it. Oh, terrible. First introduction to Ratchet and Clank of All for One. Really? First. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was an okay game. Yeah, I didn't hear the greatest but... things about it, but uh, it seemed alright when I played it. It, it's an okay game, but it's a little weird because it's not exactly a Ratchet and Clank game. It's Ratchet hmm. and Clank smashed together with like a Diablo game, I thought, because it's more focused on cooperative play than single player Ratchet and Clank gameplay. I don't know. That's that's the impression I got. Huh? If I were you, I would. Yeah, it doesn't make sense because it is uh, co-op. The new yeah. one plays like a dream. I played it at PSX, and it it, it is just awesome. I can't wait. It's essentially the very first that's cool. one, so that's a good introduction to Ratchet and Clank. And if you can't wait, the correct in time is phenomenal. Yeah, I was actually looking at it, that on Amazon the other day. And yeah, it, it's like, I think a lot of people consider that one the best. It, it's the like the culmination of the series before it. I guess they were trying to do different things so that it didn't get stale because... You had um, three, four, actually, Ratchet and Clank PS2 games, I think. And then hmm. Tools of Destruction. Wow. And then A Quest for Booty, which was a downloadable game, but still the normal formula, and then A Crack in Time. So seven or eight, I might be missing one, you know, really similar games. So I think they wanted to differentiate a little bit and that's where you get uh, all for one and uh, full frontal assault which was a power defense like game but hmm. uh, the Kraken time is great it was like the last real Wretched and Clank I mean you got uh, into the Nexus I think it was called which was kind of a return to form but it was really short as well so not quite the follow up to a Kraken time that we were hoping for in terms of a real Ratchet and Clank game but yeah, wasn't it Wait, Into the Nexus yeah. kind of like a late PS3 generation game? Yeah, it was one of the... And I don't even remember exactly when it, it came like out. it was like 2013. Like, one of those games right. that came out... It came out the year uh, that PS4 released. It might have. Uh, it might but, have been uh, early that year. I'm not entirely sure. I remember Full Front of Assault also came to Vita. Those and then uh, hmm. into the Nexus was supposed to come to Vita, but never did for some reason. So, think what you will about that somewhere. A good ways into yeah, that Vita. does remind Games me. Games were I starting can... to dry up for the system. Hmm. Yeah, it does remind me. I can always get the uh, the collection on Vita if I want to get caught up on any of the Ratchet and Clank stuff, but. Uh... The first couple I think are, uh, I think this PS4 one should be a good introduction. I think um, to the it's series. It's basically the first one from what I have heard and what yeah. the marketing is. So I mean, yeah, if it, if you're waiting to play a Ratchet and Clank game, wait three weeks and pay forty bucks and get the most beautiful Ratchet and Clank ever made. Um, yeah, that's probably going to be one of the only games I'm getting until Uncharted Four. Oh wait, Alien Nation. Can't forget about that. Are you guys getting Alien Nation? Do you guys see that? Nope. Yeah, that game looks awesome. Yep. Looks yeah, so cool. I probably will. That nation with aliens. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, anything by House Markets, 
it's hard, you know, yeah, hard to diverse. not buy anything by them. <laughs> Seems like a uh, dead nation mm -hmm. with like way more depth than the enemies and the and gameplay. awesome graphics. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, I think Brian, you still uh, had to tell us about what you've been playing lately, right? <laughs> yep. Well, in three weeks, I will also be playing nice. Ratchet and Clank, but. In the meantime, I've uh, still been playing some Twilight hmm. Princess. I, you know, I can never get too much <laughs> Zelda in my life. Um, for Vita, still chipping away at Digimon and uh, Trails of Cold Steel, and I picked up Monster Mon piece for two dollars during that flash sale. Yeah, day. I haven't gotten into that really yet, but uh. I mean, weird anime, cat, <laughs> animal, women, fighting, easy trophies, sure, why not? <laughs> it was $2. But, um, you know, play a little bit of Division, a little bit of Far Cry as well, and uh, going back and playing some Lego Batman 3 and Lego Dimensions. Huh. Um, trying to get the platinum in those games. And then put all my Lego Dimensions Legos up on a shelf so I don't have to worry about it for a while at least. Cool. I finally got uh, yelled at because my wife looked down one day and realized that the top of our entertainment center is <laughs> Legos now. I have about 20 to 30 of the things, so they're starting to take over. I need to finish and put them away. Yeah, it was, it was like that at my uh, brother's house when I went to visit too because... Uh... My uh, nephew-in-law, I guess he would technically be called, uh, has Lego Dimensions too and a Wii U and stuff. So, yeah, it looked a lot like that over his house. <laughs> Lego stuff everywhere, and not to mention the the actual little portal thing, which takes up a bit of space too. But yeah, it looked like a cool game though, yeah. from what I saw. Um, but oh, it's, a, it's a great game. I love it, and I love the fact that you can. You know, build your Lego, have your characters, and I don't know if you showed off any of the actual building in game, but you get like an in game instruction manual. It shows you how to build something. Like, uh, hmm. um, you know, add to the collection. I'm getting the Simpsons pack tomorrow. So you know, I put Homer on the on the portal, and it'll show me how to build his car and the television set that comes with that level hmm. pack. That's cool. Um,. So it's very in-depth. It asks you to, you know, build the portal when you first get it and then take a pop part, certain parts of it and put certain parts together as the game goes on. It's, it's fun. I like how it's... Granted, I haven't played Skylanders or Disney Infinity, but it seems more interactive in the sense that, you know, it's not just a toy you put on a portal and take off. It's Legos that you build to put on the portal and then can take the portal apart and put it back together in certain ways and stuff like this. It's Legos. So, I mean, I loved Legos as a kid, and I love the fact that I can now build them and put them <laughs> in a game and beat up the Joker as Homer <laughs> Simpson. That's just awesome. Right? Yeah, no, it sounds pretty cool. Like, all the different mashups of uh, licenses that game has is pretty, is pretty awesome. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, it's... Yeah, um... Love it. So this week uh, we wanted to discuss. Um, there's been some rumors going around lately that Sony's going to release a PlayStation 4.5 or 4K. People are calling it. Um, and just the idea of like, you know, consoles just not you know having being upgraded or upgradable consoles and just what they're planning on right now, which is basically just a, a PS4 that can support 4K content. Um, possibly, it, it's rumored to have maybe a better graphics card, and uh, you know, any of the implications that would have on, you know, the people that stick with just the regular PS4. Um, personally, I think it could be cool, like, uh, kind of... The way they're saying it, it kind of, you know, just seems like, uh, you know, like I said, it's it's a PS4 that is be, you know, be able to support 4K because I think there is kind of a need for that because there's not a whole lot of devices out there that can really support 4K. I mean, there are 4K Blu-ray players, but they're 
like three times as expensive as a regular Blue Blade player still. Um, also, like, you know, Netflix, and I think, has some 4K, but generally it's hard to find, like, actual 4K stuff to put on a 4K TV. And a lot of people haven't because nowadays 4K TVs are maybe, like, $100 more than a 1080p TV. So it's like, why wouldn't you go with it? Depending on what brand you get, at least uh, for Vizio, it's like it's only like an extra hundred bucks, so it's kind of a no-brainer, you know what I mean? But um, it's just a shame that unless you have a gaming PC, there's not a whole lot of 4K content you accidentally put through it and get the full advantage out of it. Um, so I think Sony realizes that. They realize there's a market for, you know, 4K content and machines that can actually handle that, and they, you know, want to cash in, I guess. Um, I think it could be cool, but the thing I don't want them to do is to make games that only will work on the new PS4. I think that would be screwed up and uncool. Also unnecessary, like, um, you, you know, like I remember on Nintendo 64 there was the expansion pack thing, and it's like it, it basically, you think it only gave the N64 more RAM. I think it doubled the amount of RAM it had, which, you know, meant a few things, but what I didn't like is the fact that certain games or certain parts of certain games, uh, specifically Perfect Dark, just weren't even playable without the expansion pack. Like, I remember I I rented it to check it out, and all I could do was play the multiplayer because I didn't have the expansion pack at the time. Um, so it's like you couldn't even play the single player without it. Like, that is something I hope they don't do with this PS4.5 or 4K, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I really think that, you know, if, if developers can port games to Xbox One, and PS4 and PSE, there's no excuse for them not having two separate graphics modes for whether you, you know for the same game on you know whether you have a PS4.5 or a PS4. Like it, it really cannot be that hard to code it so that you know the the graphics will just be lowered if you're on a regular PS4. Like this, I don't think that it should be separated, and there should I don't think there should be uh, PS4.5 exclusive games. You know what I mean? But um, I think like. From what I have read, though, like, that might not be the case at all. Like, it, it might just be slightly more powerful graphics card. Like, not a big enough deal to actually play um, 4K games, at least at the graphics settings that we have games now. Because, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that it's, it's, quite, it's pretty tough to do. Um, takes a lot more power because it, it is, uh, I believe, four times the amount of pixels as 1080p. So, um... I think it will be cool though for the few games that can actually do 4K because I know they the developer of Trying to said that if the PS4 supported it, they could easily do a 4K 30 FPS mode, and um, I think that would be really cool because as someone who's actually seen what games look like in 4K, it's incredible. Like I think games really are what take the biggest advantage out of the whole 4K thing because I, I mean I've seen 4K movies, um, and and they definitely look a lot better. But you really see a difference in games because games have a lot more, um, you know, like artifacting, like aliasing. You know, you see jagged edges on stuff, even in 1080p with anti-aliasing running. In 4K, you don't even ha need uh, anti-aliasing and you still will see, like, it, everything will look perfectly clean. It's pretty incredible, like, and, I, like, I can't wait till the consoles actually make that leap, so... If that was what the PS4.5 or 4K would be doing, I'd be probably getting one right away. Um, just because I, you know, like I've said before, like I really, really like 4K resolution for gaming. Um, although, you know, it'll be kind of limited because it's, it's pretty tough to, uh, get running even on a, on a, on a, you know, high end PC, let alone a console. But, uh, just if, if they could somehow make it work. Right. And, yeah, I th I would I would like it because I personally really really like the advantages of 4K, even if it meant like, you know, toning down all the graphics effects and and assets and stuff. Like, uh, I just really like clean looking graphics. I always have. So, uh, for me, it would it could be a cool idea, but I don't know. I still hope they don't make exclusive games to it. Like, I hope that people that stick with regular PS4 aren't kind of left in the dust because I think they'd alienate a lot of people. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? Um, I think Brian, I'm sure, I think you mentioned you had an opinion on it before, right? Uh, yeah. Um, but I am of two minds about this, whatever 
is 4.5. Um, if it turns out that it's an actual new PlayStation 4 console that is 4K capable, um, probably mostly for movies and television and media that's not games because they're a little more intensive on a, on a system, then I don't think mm-hmm. it's a big deal. You know, that's that's a good option for, like you said, maybe making it a more expensive PS4, but still a cheaper 4K player for uh, mm-hmm. televisions out there, um, which has been essentially the introduction for all of these um, media playing uh, new media yeah. playing devices. I mean, PS2 was a yep. cheap DVD player. PS3 was Very a true. cheap Blu-ray player. It would almost make sense for PS4 mm-hmm. to be a cheap 4K player. Um, for I don't, I don't know what they would cost. I don't have a 4K TV, so I really don't know. But I mean, still, if it's a uh, hundreds of dollars cheaper than a standard 4K Blu-ray player, then it... that's a great value, especially for people who don't have a PS4. And can also play games and yeah, do whatever it's actually... else. And even with people who have a PS4, you can trade it in and get two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars off the mm. fancy. Yeah, it's PS4. actually not that bad. Like it's not like uh, how the Blu-ray players were when PS3 came out, where PS3 was actually the cheapest Blu-ray player. Um, I've looked at it, and basically the cheapest 4K Blu-ray player you can get is like hundred fifty bucks. Uh, but if you were, you know, looking for a PS4 oh. or or something like that, and the PS4.5 or 4K is the only, you know, 450, 500 bucks, I mean, it would make sense to go with that. Or if you already had it, it would be cool to have it, you know, the fact that it would be able to also play 4K Blu-rays, and you know, instead of you having to buy a separate player, which would come in handy, I think, um, right. for, you know, gamers and... So, like, I don't think they're trying to sell it just on that, but I think um, they're just, you know, maybe trying to put on an extra SKU just um, just for it to be there, I guess. Like, a, I'm not sure how hard they're going to push it, like, um, but, yeah, like, a, I will just have to see what they have to say. But, sorry, you can go go ahead. Like, I just want to let you know, the prices aren't that bad on the Blu-ray players, but they are quite a bit more expensive okay. than the regular Blu-ray players you can get for, like, 50 bucks now. Oh, okay, that's good to know. I <laughs> have no idea about these things. I go digital anyways, but, um, um, yeah, I mean, if it's just that, that's great. Um, even if it was an expansion, N64 expansion pack type of add-on, I mean, you have, uh, USB ports, you have ports in the system. If it was just an extra little mm-hmm. box that you plugged in that added to the processing power of the PlayStation 4 and made it capable of playing in 4k that yeah i know that there are uh that, cool. that there are uh add-ons for certain graphics cards on pcs where you plug something in and you know it enhances the graphics and capabilities of a, of a gaming pc in case you have something like yeah. a laptop that's not natively as easy to upgrade so if they went that route that probably wouldn't have That'd be a huge deal either, unless, of course, they started making games that were incapable of running without it, um, depending on the cost, of course, and what games and stuff like that. That's that's getting into yeah. murky territory. I mean, the big thing with um, the N64 expansion pack was that it more or less came free with a game when it released. So that's why it wasn't as big of a shock for people. I think it was Donkey Kong 64 that it came with standard Hmm. with the game. So, I mean, it might have been $70 or $80 instead of $70 Hmm. for the game. Or just like $10 more expensive. But you've got the expansion pack plus the game that took advantage of the expansion pack. So, I mean... Yeah, that makes sense. Renting a game that required the expansion pack might have been a little... Awkward, like mm-hmm. your example, but still, in that one particular case with expansion pack version 64, a lot of people that were going to get it got the game that gave you the expansion pack for basically free anyway, or really cheap. So, um, of course, I don't think Sony would do that. That would be weird to do that these days if you had an $150 
um, basically external hard drive looking <laughs> thing came with the game. Doable, but in a, in our age of ever increasing digital sales, that's probably a little more of a stretch to do. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing I have, the biggest issue and fear I have is if it's a stronger system and it doesn't take advantage of the GPU, CPU for uh, 4K, because 4K gaming is but it's probably still impossible for that. Um, and they made better games that required me to have this new system that would, I don't think that would be a very smart yeah. idea because, um, because I mean, there's, there's so many PlayStation 4 users out there in the wild and there aren't too many of them, I think overall, uh, that would go out and buy a new PlayStation 4 just because, I don't know, Uncharted, not Uncharted. They said it's the last one, but uh, The Rise Last of, of Us, two. or The Last of Us 2, required right. the PS4K because something about the frame rate would just dip too much on a regular PS4, and it needed, you know, that, that sort of thing would just piss off so many I mean, people. Even the people that would go out and buy it would yeah, have such a bad totally. taste in their mouth, you know? And and I don't think it, like, it would be, you know, that the games would need PS4, K. I mean, 4K or whatever you want to call it. I think it's just the fact that they'd be doing that just to sell more systems. Like, because any game you could just turn down the graphic settings and get it to run, you know, on pretty much anything. I mean, the fact that you know there are still games being ported to PS3 and stuff, and you know, like uh, PSP or like P PS Vita and stuff. Like, I mean, there's always ways to scale down a game. Like, I mean, they got Crisis 3 running on PS3 last generation. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, um, like, so I, I think that it, it would more just be an excuse, like, a, a, in, in a way for them to sell more systems. Like, so to me, any games that would be exclusive to this thing would probably be more of them trying to just sell the systems mo rather than them actually needing the extra power. See, my, my understanding of it is um, is more so along the lines of relating to PSVR. Um, like, the 4K will be, like, a perk, similar to, like, what you guys talked about. It won't really be anything, keeping anything from anybody. It'll just be an option for people who want 4K video content. You know, watch 4K Blu-ray and all that. As far as the expanded um, power goes, I believe that'll be there to allow PSVR to keep it from limping into next generation. It'll be like a little boost because it's already behind um, uh, the Oculus Rift and uh, HTC Vive. You know, it's already not going to be as powerful as those from the get-go. And since those are with PCs, they're going to be able to improve over time while the PSVR is handcuffed to the PS4, which isn't going to get any better, you know, for the next three or so years, right? So if you came out with a PS4.5 with a little more power, you know, you'd at least, like you said, you're going to be able to scale things down for regular PSVR users. But the general probably litmus test, like the baseline, is going to be this PS4.5, and that's what's going to really allow things to progress into next generation when it'll really be able to get a boost. And it'll still be behind. It will, the consoles will always be behind. But at least they'll be um, the 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 flaws won't be so glaring as they may be if it was handcuffed to PS4 regular for you know three four more years. Yeah, like, but I, I'd be I'm thinking that that might even leave a even more sour taste in in customers' mouth because uh, PSVR is already really expensive on its own. But if then if they also had to get another PS4 more powerful ps4 just to run certain games um like i think that that would just really alienate a lot of people um yeah i'm with you i'm with you on that I, and i kind of feel what worries me is that i feel like they're focusing on 4k and every the all the info that's leaking out because they don't want to hurt psvr sales because if it gets out that psvr is the reason they're doing this you know, people yeah. are going to be so skeptical of it off the bat. 
they'll just play the wait yeah, and see true. game. Yeah, true. Because um, you know, like I've mentioned before, like and they have too as well. Sony has as well that you know PSVR games absolutely have to be sixty frames a second as a minimum. Like not even uh, a recommendation. Like it's it's a minimum. Like yeah, that's like yeah, that's the absolute minimum. Like less than that because it, it'll make people sick completely. and. So if like, you know, they're already thinking about making another PS4 just for VR, like then it, it kind of <laughs> seems like, you know, maybe things aren't going so well on PS4 for VR. So, like that's just like another, you know, reason to be, you know, wary of buying a PSVR because uh, I mean, it, it already is a very steep price tag. Right. Well, Sony doesn't have the greatest history of of supporting products that you know don't sell like hotcakes you know like a uh, vita move um and vr is definitely a little different but it's just sony gives up pretty quickly and pretty easily so it's you know it's kind of hard to make that sort of an investment especially when there's you know rumors of another ps4 being brought along just to support it it's kind of hard for the people that don't want to you know, spend a thousand dollars just to play vr to you know make that dive because it might, you know, the idea of a of a PS4 K or whatever right. for VR like might give people the idea that um, the impression that you know that you, they're going to need that, and so instead of looking at spending five hundred dollars on the VR, which is already enough as it is, like they might be looking at spending even more than that if they want the best experience. So it's like uh, I think that you're right that Sony is probably going to be tight lipped on that if it's true. Um, but yeah, personally, I hope it's not, and I personally just hope that it's basically the original rumor because this rumor came up a couple months ago and it didn't sound the way it does now like because they didn't mention the gpu upgrade like they basically just said that it's a ps4 that can support the hdmi formats or or whatever just to output 4k and it would be able to output 4k video and uh you know 4k resolution for games although you know, like we've mentioned, it would be hard to actually run 4K games, although there are a few exceptions, like, you know, like I mentioned, Shrine 2 could actually do it, but, uh, like, they, that was the original rumor, and ever since they mentioned GPU, people have been going nuts, but, I mean, the other thing is, is if they really did want a console that could do 4K gaming, it would need to be more than just a GPU, because uh, the PS4 is already kind of CPU bound as it is right now, so it's like, uh, they'd have to upgrade both, basically, and, uh, yeah, we'll see. It's just a rumor, so it's. A, but it, they did make another report, I think today, that it is actually, a, you know, it seems like it's pretty legit, like that it might actually be real. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how E3 plays out. That's for sure. I actually um, read something earlier today regarding the. The, the VR uh, issue where that where um some I, I don't exactly where I remember reading it but someone postulated that perhaps the bump up in CPU and GPU would potentially for gaming help VR in the long run where they could introduce a wireless VR headset. Because right now it's attached wire, hmm. wired to a box that handles extra processing oh. for the PSP, or PS4 that then connects to the PS4 that as well. That actually makes sense. So yeah. I read that. Yeah, I read that it's possible that they'd be able to have a wireless headset that would link through Bluetooth to the PS4 to get rid of yeah. the extra processing box. In which case, that would free up a lot of. Um, I, I actually. You know, I get I. <laughs> free up, I assume that wires on the floor with VR, where you can't really see where you're <laughs> going, would be a little scary. Um, That's if very you're not true. used to it, or something like that, or just don't want wires around. So I mean, there's there's that possibility as well. I don't know how much merit there is. I don't know if it's just some random person speculating but i mean it seems again without mm -hmm. knowing any specs at all i don't i don't know if we actually even know the actual specs involved in uh, the processing unit on vr um and we definitely don't know any specs on a rumored extra yeah. ps4 console so who knows if there's any link 
Then those put up you know what? To me, that sounds a lot more yeah, plausible case, to me than fine. the idea of a you know PS4.5 where it's like a a mid cycle uh, console, like a new console. Like to me, that sounds that does sound like very logical that it would be not to you know make better VR games or or better games. It, like it would be just to you know all support 4K, but also make it easier for um, VR to be supported so that you wouldn't have to have the extra processing boss box, which would also probably cut down on the cost of the PlayStation VR. Um, because you know, not having that processing box should save some money, even if it does switch to wireless. But then, don't you think they would try to get that out before PSVR? Um, not necessarily. I mean, unless they unless, just don't have unless time the processing they... unit. It's tough because it seems like, I mean, with all these pre-orders, you got to imagine, and they're expecting to sell like how many in the first year of VR? It's like two million. I think they said Is like one point two million or something. Projection. Yeah. One point three. So you got to imagine they're planning to put one point three million of those boxes in people's houses. Hmm. I mean, I think it's also if we're going along this line of thinking where you're talking about a wireless VR PSVR headset. I think that it's possible in to in a in a year or two when VR is established, if it's established, and there are a bunch of games, and it's more common in homes that you start to think, well, what do we do about PSVR and PS5? So if you have a Bluetooth only VR headset that you allow it to communicate with a PS4 that has the processing unit in it. You can also start future proofing it a little bit and have a wireless headset that's good to go with PS5 that has all the guts mm -hmm. in it. That's uh, VR yeah, capable. Yeah, that's a good point too. That's even stronger. So you don't have to worry about this uh, PS VR version one as it, I mean, in this case, it, we call it that's uh, that communicates with the PS4 and may not properly communicate with the PS5, and wouldn't maybe be able to play uh, PS5 games. I mean, I don't know if that's what they're doing. I, I assume they probably want to work something, work some magic around for because I mean, if you're spending four hundred dollars mm -hmm. on a peripheral, essentially, then they probably want to make it PS5 capable yeah. down the line, but. I assume it would still be a little weaker and you would want to make PSVR um, more of a platform and less of a peripheral down the line. And maybe that's kind of like a half step in that direction hmm. as well to eliminate some of the, uh, the peripheralness of, of it, as it were. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it makes more sense to me that you'd want to eliminate the box for future um, iterations of, of VR and just make it a little more simple of a, of a system to use for future systems, PS5, PS now with um, Bravia TVs that have PS uh, mm -hmm. VR games and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it, it does make sense. And the way they've talked about PSVR, it does kind of sound like it, it is something that... Uh you know, isn't just going to be for PS4. Like, it, it, they, the way they've talked about it does sound, kind of sound like the, it is going to, you know, be something that carries over to to PS5 as well. So I think, you know, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. And, um, you know, that, that that definitely sounds pretty logical to me. Um, but I don't know, like, uh, as far as, like, the idea of, like, the console cycle being shorter this generation like what, what would you guys think about that like because you know seven years was quite a bit of a long time i thought you know it was seven years for ps3 and uh eight years for xbox 360 like um you know what do you guys think they should do like this time around do you think it should be a shorter generation or um do you like how it was before um i think they should I think I'm against a PS4.5 and shortening the generation like at all, altogether. 
I think you well, just I mean, I mean, um, I, I didn't really mean like dope. shortening it with PS4.5. I, I kind of meant like, uh, yeah, okay. even shortening it with a PS5. I think. I, I would like it to just say PS4, normal amount of time. I don't think console gamers really care about how good uh, yeah. PC games look. You know, I, I think they really, I think ultimately they just want their exclusive experiences, which, you know, developers always find ways to mm. make get more out of these systems. And I think you'd still be impressed by the end of the console generation, even if it wasn't as good as what people were seeing on, on PCs. But saying that, however, I mean, even that makes it sound like maybe VR is the reason that this is dr- driven. It's because that's the first time that Sony is really competing with something that's yeah. on PCs, you know. So just that thought of thought of that Sony and PlayStation being competing on that same field makes it seem more plausible that the reason why they're doing it is to make sure VR keeps up, not necessarily that the PS4 yeah. keeps up. Yeah, I'm, I'm still. Which again, I'm against it no matter what. I think you just PS4 is doing so well. I think you just ride it, ride out your ride out this generation. Even if you end it like a year early, you have such good like uh such good um karma built up with the next generation. Come out with another great console for four hundred, four hundred fifty dollars. People will eat it up again. Yeah, I think I think four hundred does seem like the the sweet spot as far as price wise for new consoles. Um, but to, yeah, like I don't know. I do kind of like the idea of like more powerful consoles, and I I would personally rather have the generation only last like. Uh, you know, P- I I hope PS5 would come come along at around 2018 or 2019, rather than you know 2020. I think seven years is quite a long time to be, you know, waiting for another generation. Although they seem to like it that way, and I think a lot of consumers like it that way too, because they don't have to upgrade. But um, I'm wondering how how bad it'll get towards the end of the generation because it, last generation it was a little different because. You know the PS3 and Xbox 360 were so gimped as far as RAM um, and GPU power goes. Like towards the end, like there was just a, a pretty gigantic gap between uh, you know PC games and uh, PS3, you know console games. But uh, I think with PS4 is like a little better equipped because it, there's more than enough RAM. Um, the GPU is is definitely capable of some amazing stuff. Plus. Um, you know they're obviously going to get better with it, and um, also like I, I really don't think that the like especially now like I really not sure how much of a gap there will be between PC games and PS4 games until 4K gaming starts being more prominent. Like, because uh, I mean I've I have a gaming PC. I've pretty much seen everything it has to offer. As far as graphics and in, in at, at 1080p at least, it really doesn't look better. Like it, I mean, it looks a little better and the frame rate's better, obviously, but graphically, it, it basically looks the same. And I'd even argue that some PS4 exclusive games look better than anything on PC. So I think these consoles maybe are a little better longevity-wise than the PS3 was, but I don't know. I still hope it doesn't last a full seven years. <laughs> It most likely will, though. I mean, maybe not the whole seven, but the PlayStation One launched in did it ninety four. Really? PlayStation Two launched in two thousand. PlayStation Three launched in two thousand six. Mm. So, first three PlayStations yeah. launched six years apart. With Xbox being eight years, that was what people were talking about the console generation dragging on a little bit. But the seven years for the PlayStation between three and four wasn't that much of an outlier. It was an extra year. Um, and arguably it's because that's when PS3 started, you know, mm-hmm. catching up and uh, surpassing the 360. So they wanted to get as many consoles out there and as many of the games that they've spent billions of dollars mm-hmm. on at that point out to as many consumers as possible. Um, so, I mean, if that, if that um, if that continues, we'll see another PS. We'll see the PS5 in 2019, <laughs> 2020, 
somewhere around there and it wouldn't be too far out of left field. Um, I mean, that's kind of why I'm excited about the NX. Um, who needs LPS 4.5 or a mid-tier upgrade to a system when you could just buy hmm. a new console in the middle? It's That's not a good point. Quite as powerful, but it's I just hope Zelda that they, you know, the NX is is good this time. Like, like I hope it's not like another Wii U, basically. Oh God, if that picture with the Vita controller looking thing is accurate, I'm gonna cry myself <laughs> to sleep yeah. that night. It's terrifying. Yeah, I know it does seem a little crazy, especially because there's only sticks. Like that is just super dumb. Like, like uh, although, like, you know, the sticks are really the most important part, I would say, of a controller. Even just having... No, buttons and sticks are the most important part. A controller is the most nah, important see, part. Uh, see, personally, I could sticks. easily live live with touch buttons, but I cannot live without sticks. Sticks are... You cannot get the precise control you need um, for, like, shooters, racing games without the sticks. I mean... You could say the same thing about D-pads for, like, uh, fighting games and, like, physical buttons for fighting games, but I don't really play a lot of that stuff, so... At least for me, um, it... I don't know. I think ultimately you need both. Oh, yeah, that... Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Like, you I think... I, you, I was just saying, though, like, I think it, it would be worse touch, if it didn't have... Touch control. But yeah, I agree. Like, it, the idea of having touch buttons would be stupid as well. But not as bad as actually playing games on a touch screen completely. But I mean, you look at mm -hmm. the PS Vita's touch buttons, like, they don't not work, but at the same time, like, those are so inconvenient compared to the real thing. There's a reason that they changed it in a system update where you can use the the stick slash D-pad and buttons to select things instead of having to touch <laughs> everything. Because, I don't know if you remember, yeah. in the early days of the Vita... There, we, yeah, there was no stick. Although for the funny thing is, anything like is, that. is I, is I don't, I still use and that the was touch annoying. for the menus and stuff. At least, like I never use the sticks for the, for the menus. But uh, as far as playing games, like I think especially the sticks are important to have physical. Like uh, I don't know, have you guys have actually have tried any like cell phone games where you basically have two analog sticks but they're on the touchscreen? It, it's Fuck pretty it terrible. Like. Uh, I mean, it's it's usable in certain games, but as far as any precision, like for sh you know shooter, it's just not no, it's terrible. So like, uh, that's all I was trying to say with the with that supposed NX uh, controller pad thing is it is at least it does have two sticks, but still, man, like if if it's touch touch buttons, they'll just be done. Plus, it looked tiny, so it's like I don't know if the game would be displayed on the screen or if it would just be. A screen for buttons, possibly like a separate menu, like the Wii U controller, or I, I don't even know, but it, it's weird. Like, it's definitely strange as hell that they have that there. <laughs> so, I hope that's not what it actually is either. You know, yeah. I, I agree with you, Brian, because that would be pretty bad. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, the Wii U has its faults, and mm -hmm. it has a lot of faults. Most egregiously is the tablet controller, yeah. which probably doesn't help that it is I think like half of the price of the console. Yeah, it probably is, yeah. So so I mean that, that that's another thing that worries me. If you spend half of your money on the controller versus the console itself, then what does it say about the console and they can't out they probably can't outprice an Xbox or a PS4. It has to be in that range, fifty dollars more is not that big of a deal if it's nicer looking. But mm -hmm. uh, who who needs a PS four point five when you have a brand new console from Nintendo on the way? But coming full circle, Nintendo did set a scary precedent with the new Nintendo yeah. 3DS. That is a more powerful 3DS that has exclusive features yeah. in games. And I'm wondering, I don't know how well it sells, <laughs> um, probably in Japan well enough, because those things are like toys over there. <laughs> but still, you have games that are new Nintendo 3DS exclusive. You have, um, oh man, what do they say in the most recent Direct? Super Nintendo Virtual Console games are 
only playable on the new 3DS, uh, which makes yeah, no sense to me. Isn't... As it, it, it's probably as a means of giving you more of a reason to buy it versus an old 3DS yeah. that's cheaper. Um, or a 2DS or something like that. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, it's just that that is scary. That's what I don't want out of a PS4K or yep. a PS4.5. If it blocks gaming features or games off from me that has a regular PS4 or the 40, almost 40 million uh -huh. PS4s out in the wild, you know, that'll create a problem. And um, I think it was you, Stephen, that said in the article on PlayStation Lifestyle that it would just alienate a huge and, and piss off so many people when Sony has so much goodwill going for them right now. And that's absolutely true. They, From the moment they came out at E3, you can share games. It's not always online. It's $400, not $500. I mean, that was... They've been amazing ever since. And all of a sudden, if they were to come out and say, by the way, there's a slightly more powerful PS4, but if you want to play this game, you've got to get this new PS4. I mean, so many people right. would be pissed off, and that would just... And it, it's, it's one of those things, too, where, like, it's it's not only Sony doing that, but you look at everything Microsoft is doing to catch up. You know, they've done so much to, like, undo the bad things that they did. They've built up so much goodwill with gamers. However, no matter how much they do, it doesn't matter as long as Sony keeps doing the right thing. And even Microsoft was talking about a more powerful Xbox One. Hmm. Uh, I don't, right. I don't exactly remember the article or the quote, but Bill Spencer said something along the lines of him wanting to create a more, a slightly more powerful Xbox because, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not even quoting or paraphrasing at this point, but I assume it's the Xbox compared to a PS4 game is generally the inferior game yeah. because. You know, PS4 is a lead platform. It's, it's a little more powerful, so people notice that. Why, you know, if it's 720... But I could see... Um, see, that's the thing, though. I could see them pulling the same card as Sony, but then they have the better upgrade program. They're taking a loss on, like, every single console. And that's how they pull ahead. And then they use that springboard in the next generation because Sony's the one that took for granted their lead yeah no I, I definitely think that's possible too because like the way it's been going lately i mean it kind of seems like sony is kind of getting a little cocky lately you know like um the psvr's price like four hundred dollars i mean they're really not i don't really think they're trying to give any goodwill to gamers with that price i mean like it's it's costing more than more than a ps4 I don't know. I, I think I think that's a really really fair price. I mean, but I honestly, how, think how can you really honestly say that when it costs more than a I, I PS4? I do too, actually. Well, they yeah, said it would it's, be it's different. It's different technology. Cheaper technology. Yeah, different technology. <laughs> like I think, you know, when you look at the competition and you know that like one of them costs standalone is twice as much as a uh, PSVR. That, that's it's so like head and shoulders below the rest. That's really of no excuse goes, though, like I, I mean, because that's a totally really, different market. I don't think so. I think it is. I think it PC is. PC is already they're already used to paying four hundred dollars for graphics card. Plus, the the thing is, is the Oculus was never going to be that expensive when it was the Oculus. But ever since Facebook bought it, it kind of changed. I mean, the the dev, dev kits were only three hundred bucks, and all you know, all the rumors pointed at the launch version also being four hundred bucks, but. I mean, the bottom line is, is like, it's just a completely different market. PS4 is it was is such a success because it sold at a cheap price. You know, as cheap as they could make it. There's no way you can tell me that the PlayStation VR is even half as cheap as they could make it. Like they See, I kind of, I kind of feel like VR is the different market. Like it's the VR is a separate market on its own, and I think. Yeah. Sony is just a platform that's offering VR, and I think the VR device I kinda, is uh, I by kinda far disagree the most with that because, like, to the, to I mean, the yeah, PCs are definitely more expensive, but it, if somebody's really going to get something just for VR, they're most likely going to spend the extra money for a PC. I mean, like, because it's really not that much cheaper. Honestly, I feel I feel I kind of don't agree with that. I feel like they're way more likely to get the PS4 for the experience. I think, you know, the average person, the average Joe 
they see any three of the VRs, they're going to be impressed, no matter how it looks. I think if you don't know how good PCs can look, I think you don't know the difference. And you think that you see VR and you think PS, PS4 plus PSVR is half the price of the, uh, the competitors. I think it's far more likely to jump in on PSVR at or VR as PSVR simply because VR is impressive to no matter well, which. Well, that's one you not see. including the the, yeah. la the possible yeah. lack of support that PSVR could have, and like I mean, you know, the casual market might not really look into it that deeply, or they might not look into the fact that you know some PS4 VR games might be way below par as far as graphics wise, which they will because they have to be 60 frames a second. But uh, the th the thing is, is for people that already own right. PS4, the idea of sp having to spend another five hundred dollars just to get a headset to play certain video games, not well, I guess supposedly you can play all video games on it, and, like you can use it as a monitor. But I really don't think that's going to be the best way to play games. I mean, it might be cool for a little while, but you wouldn't want to have that thing on your head for like you know as long as you do like play on a big TV. But like, for the people that already own PS4, like, it's kind of ridiculous. They're going to have to shell out another $500 when the PS4 itself only costs 400 or even less if they got it, uh, you know, around Black Friday, which is kind of around, you know, it's it, PSVR is coming out in the fall, too. So it's like, basically, you're going to have to spend more money on a little headset, a little peripheral than the PS4 itself. And, and if you actually look at the components that are in a PS4, it's it, like, as far as what Sony has to spend on it, it's worth way more than what a PSVR is worth. As far as the internals, I mean, the what it's actually made of, I mean, it's not even close. Like, the, 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 the processor, I mean, actually, the backup processor in the PS4, the secondary CPU, is probably as powerful as that processing unit that's for the PSVR. Like, I mean, it, so I just cannot see how it's justified that they charge $400, not even including the PS camera or anything else you need, just because Oculus and HTC Vive are ripping people off. Like, I don't think that's a... F Forget the R and D though. Well, I mean, since when do they? Well, I, since when do they charge I, us for R and D? I mean, they didn't do that with the PS4 or any other console. They, they did with the PS3. Well, no, the thing is, is that the PS3 was actually the they took a loss on that I mean, thing. So you can't really use that as an example because that, like, that thing was actually worth a lot more than they actually sold it for. I mean, that's why people at MIT were were buying PS3s to create supercomputers because it's the cheapest way to do it. Like, I mean, because they were literally selling those things at a loss. So it's even though they were outrageously expensive and it, and it looked like it was, they were doing something anti-consumer, they actually weren't. Like, they were just trying to put out something that was way ahead of the curve. I mean, which it really was in some ways. Like, the cell processors it was at, would actually still be pretty viable for what's so hard to work with, even today. Um, but it's just... It, but it's not just that. Like, it's also, like, you know, the PS2 games, charging $15 for each of those. Uh, no Man's Sky, t taking what is basically an indie game, charging $60 for it. Um, closing down Evolution Studios after the massive success that Drive Club was. Um, it, it's, I don't know, it just seems like Sony's trying to get in cocky and getting back to their old ways lately. And that's not the only thing, but it's just... Um, yeah, yeah, it just doesn't seem like they're trying to earn goodwill like they were when PS4 first launched. Well, Microsoft, on the other hand, is still doing that, but they're so far behind that they're really not even in comp direct competition anymore. And it's like I kind of wish Microsoft would come. I mean, the Xbox would start doing better, so just to keep Sony in check because lately, to me, it seems like they're they're really not like they're really trying to just make as much money as they can. Which I mean, yeah, they're a corporation; they're going to do that, but it's just like a total 180 from what how they were around. PS4's launch and and it's just like I, I it's not that I wouldn't expect them to you know be like that all generation but it's just like they've made almost a complete 180 as far as I'm concerned just as far as how they're treating gamers lately I just don't necessarily think I, I don't think it's that's that they're treating gamers really any differently I mean you said it it's a business and Sony really isn't in a position to be just taking losses left and right well, I mean, there's a the difference the between gamer. I mean, there's a difference PS4. between taking a loss and charging like, as as much as this you generation could, like. Doing now. I don't think that's what they're doing. I, I really do feel like they're making gaming into, into a viable business this generation. Like last generation, like you can't sell. They the PS3 was selling at like a two hundred dollar loss at mm -hmm. first. 
per console. You, I mean, no oh, business well, can you do something like that. And I think this generation, they're trying to make it viable across the board to be profitable. And because that's the other thing, too, is like that gets reinvested into the product. And this, it grows the brand, you know. So I think right now what they're doing is approaching it from more of a business I, perspective by still see, offering like quality products. Because the PSVR is still good. P I've played it. It's impressive. People, you know, across the board. I really haven't heard many people that have played it and say it's not impressive. See, like, I wasn't trying to say that they should Even take the wanna... PSVR at a loss. Not at all. I'm just saying that they're doing a lot more than just, you know, just charging, you know, what would be smart business-wise. Like, they're, they're, it, it's it's a lot more than that. Like, it, like there's no way that they couldn't sell the PS4, PSVR for 300 bucks and still make way more profit than they do on each PS4 because I think, you know, there was a quote that the PS4 actually cost them $380 to make. And there's no way that the PSVR is even half that. Like, it's not even close. Like, internals-wise, I mean, like, it's I mean, a lot more expensive you... to make a PS4, so I think it's kind of ridiculous that they're charging more money for it. You don't. You said you don't want to factor in the R&D costs. Well, of, just because they've never done that before. Uh, PS4, PSVR, what have they but ever I mean... Done that? I'm, that's, I mean, I think that that's, that's it's, it's part of the reason. Saying, I feel like. I mean, I VR mean, VR is different. Yeah, the, how much how much money do you think that they invested in VR to make it viable? And they were doing it at the same time Oculus was doing it at the same time Vive. Well, I mean, how time, much investment you know, did they put into making the first it, PlayStation? Still, probably a lot more, but they they didn't they didn't try to rip people uh, off. Probably a lot. It. Actually, they from probably, what I remember, the, the PS1 was actually at, uh, a pretty good price, wasn't it, when it launched? It was around 350 I think. Yeah. 3 to 350 somewhere. I can't remember. I mean, the PS2 was 350 to 4 So, I mean, even even if in those cases they were taking a loss... Sony, as a business, have been around since, what, the 60s? Yeah. yeah. Making money. So they were on the verge of bankruptcy a couple of years ago because of all the stupid decisions they were making with with everything. So I, I, I think they, if they could have priced it at 300 they would have. Um, I think they invested hundreds of millions in VR as a platform to be able to succeed for a while. That's why it's the price it is. I mean, it's the same thing with uh, No Man's Sky. I don't mind the price. I'm sure that they're, they put an, a lot of money behind it, and the $60 is, well, just viable once you get your well, hands on the game. The thing is, realize is the how money, big it is, most especially of the money. you have factions and NPCs and stuff like that. I mean, it, if it's the price of the game and the game is worth $60, then... Does it really matter if it it's does, an indie game? I think it does because can an indie game not because cost it used sixty dollars? You know, the budget of a game used to be reflected in the price of the game, and with No Man's Sky, it's clearly not. It's more of that marketing budget that's being reflected in the price of the game, and and I really don't Possibly. think they. It's six people working for mm -hmm. like five years now, right? And with evolution. Um, I mean, it's unfortunate that it shut down, but at the same time, it was supposed to be a launch game, and Sony kept a studio afloat for a whole year to finish the game, and then it launched yeah, broken. And that's not what granted, I realized that since then, there it was fixed. I, it's it's what a people lot of people that don't remember. play the game. If you're not a fan of Dry, if you're a fan of Dry Club, yeah, if you're a fan of Drive Club, you remember that they, you know put everything into the game to make it workable and then fantastic and then, you know, put content out left and right for it. And that's great, but a lot of other people remember it launched broken and after it was delayed for a year. So, I mean... Yeah, but those are the people that sucks, don't... But that didn't play it, though. The business. Because like, anyone that actually played it would would not be looking at the, you know, the launch. They, you know, realized that that was... It's, it was a really brilliant game. It sold well. It made Sony a lot of money. So really, the only people who that but that are only still, thinking about I mean, the brand, the brand of Drive Club. See, was, I completely disagree. I 
That, because that, I all, guarantee all the people... that, that is what the numbers show. That that's what they saw. And they would have kept the they would have kept the studio open if Drive Club the, as a brand. It is viable, viable though. <laughs> but between the terrible launch and the P, and the PS Plus version, the PS Plus version is a joke. That is like an industry joke. How long that was just promised and just like, and then it came out and no but one. But that's even not cared. true. A lot of people did. So they care. worked for literally like two, a lot. Two years a ton of trying people to get came out. on after the PS Plus version and like, see the Draft Club is still very viable as a brand because of of how good the actual game was and there and there are millions of people that actually played it and pretty much everybody enjoyed it. Like the only. The only people that would consider Drive Club not viable, viable are the people that didn't play it. But as far like all the gamers that did play it would absolutely line up for a sequel, and I guarantee you it would sell even better than the first one did. Like it, because it turned out great. Like it turned out into a great game, and it, like it had launch problems, which were mainly just the online servers. It did get delayed. The PS Plus version was delayed. But most of the people who wanted the game had already got it at that point. It was the, the PS Plus version was just to maybe, you know, pick up people that, you know, weren't gonna take that leap because they weren't really into racing games. And it, it, it's funny, but a ton of people that were in that position ended up get, you know, trying the PS Plus version, and ended up loving it. Like, like I can't tell you how many times I've heard people talk, you know, saying that, you know. That they had to eat their words about their comments about Draft Club because they made them before they had actually played the game, and there's still tons of people playing it online. There's still uh, tons of people buying the content. Like, you'd be amazed at how many fans the game has, but th but that's because of what a good game it is. And that that no matter how much bad PR a game gets, it all can be reversed if the game becomes great, and that's exactly what Drive Club did. But See, like it, it just makes me think that Sony doesn't really look that far into it. Like, I really don't think that they go to the forums as much as they should and see what people really think. Because if they really looked up what gamers actually think about Drive Club, they, they would make a sequel in a heartbeat. In, instead, they're closing down Evo. And it's the same thing with, uh, with Sony Liverpool. L Liverpool was consistently making amazing racing games. Not just decent, amazing racing games. Um, but they but they closed them down because they had to save money. Like I I don't really think that um, Sony like realizes like uh, the importance of racing games because they're not as huge as they used to be. But that doesn't mean that they like they're not viable. Like I mean, Drive Club had sold two million copies even before the PS Plus version. I mean, not to mention any digital sales. That was just retail sales. So it's like I I don't see how you can say that as a loss or even with the bad launch like. It, that 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 uh, Evo isn't a viable studio anymore. I mean, not to mention Motorstorm, which was still a viable brand. I think, like, not to personally, to I don't think it is as viable because it's not, you know, it's kind of more like a arcade, but like a, you know, there's a certain appeal, that, like, to having licensed cars and licensed vehicles, like, that people will always be on board with more than anything else. But I mean, like, Drive Club really could have been Sony's answer to Forza Horizon, because you know, you know. Xbox has Forza, then they have Forza Horizon, which is kind of like a more casual I think Drive Club easily could have been Sony's answer to that, but instead they got rid of it, and now the only racing games they have is Gran Turismo, which comes out once every 10 years. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but even still, like it, it's st like they have no racing game studios anymore now, other than Polyphony Digital, which works at a snail's pace. So... It, no matter how bad that launch was, I mean, I think it, it just like, comes down to money. The people that actually played it would absolutely buy another Drive Club game. So I think it's kind of silly to say that the brand isn't viable just because of that launch. The only people that really look at Drive Club in a negative way are the people that didn't play it. It's less about viability, though, and more about the the business. If Drive Club, for example, was worked on for four years, that's four years of paychecks to a studio, and then they said, oh, we, have, we need another year, and that's another year of paychecks to the studio, um, and then it launched to, you know, bad press, and they took a, you know, public perception yeah. blow, and then after that, even if they recouped a lot of their money, I assume that they had, they closed it thinking, well, if it's going to be another four years till another game comes out, well, it's it wouldn't just be not though. Like, like I think feasible. Sony should realize so, that 
That's what the, the problem, gamers I actually think. think is much more important than bad press or what the press thinks. Uh, but also, let you know, like you're saying, it wouldn't take four years again but, because, I mean, keep in mind they had to create a, a game engine for PS4 and for Drive Club, so it would definitely not take that much time to to make another Drive Club. I mean, they they were you know producing con- content super fast. Um, after launch and stuff and not to mention you know doing patches and stuff so like they they easily could have got a sequel out much quicker like it, it, they they could have probably already you know been halfway there with it by now if sony had let them do it but instead they decided to can them they did though because it was a year and a half since drive club launched right so they let the studio go on for a year and a half. Yeah, but and, not to make a sequel. I mean, I just assume that if Sony no longer... Obviously. Yeah, but still, I assume it. Sony closed them down because they didn't think they'd be able to make money off of them. And it's unfortunate. I think but, maybe they made the decision I mean, to close them a long time ago. About here. If, if but, uh, are, I really think um, they yeah, should have they should have reversed that decision because um, it's far from just me. Like, believe me. The, the, like it, it's it, if you go to any forum about drive club or any you know comment site like people love it like it, it's <laughs> it, it's pretty remarkable how how much of a 180 that game has taken so like i really just wish that sony had maybe looked at that and realized that gamers are on board with it and would absolutely be down with a sequel and it would be a success, even if it got delayed, which, I mean, I don't think it would, because, I mean, they already have all the hard work done as far as making a game. It would basically just be a matter of, you know, making more content, possibly changing the format up a little bit. I mean, they could make it open world, which, I mean, wouldn't be too difficult, I don't think, because, I mean, the way the game is set up already, it, it is, you know, very close to it anyway. So, but um, I just think it's a huge mistake. But that's just like I don't know. I, I, I think that that probably was a decision they made a long time ago, and they just unfortunately didn't reverse it. But uh, um, yeah, mainly, mainly I just hope that Sony oh. is isn't uh, going back to their old ways, you know, of uh, you know anti-consumer type thing, you know, practices, and you know I hope Xbox finds some more success just to keep them che- in check. Because, I mean, competition is good uh, for us, for the gamers, for the consumers. It's always good because, you know, they're competing. They're trying to do the best they can, and we win that way, so. Oh, no, I absolutely agree, but I just don't think it's anti-consumer quite as much it is, as it is Sony having a tight belt more than they have for the last 20 yeah. years. Because cocky is... Cocky was the PlayStation 3 yeah. and that launch. And even taking out of the loss, saying, you're going to pay $600 for the system, and it's okay because people will buy it. And plenty of people bought it, yeah. but a lot of people didn't because they just couldn't afford it. So, you know, ever since then, Sony's been hitting all the right notes, and I just, you know, studios closing down are unfortunate. Um, but... If the price isn't right, then the price isn't right. If VR needed to be at 400 then it needs to be at 400 And I think that's a decent price. Um, Evolution closing is sad. But if they couldn't afford to keep the studio open for another game, then you know, they couldn't. You know, that's one thing. If they make a 4K model and charge $500 and make games exclusive for it, then they'll lose money because yeah. very few people will buy it and that will be anti-consumers. So let's hope they don't do that because I think that was the original topic about an hour ago. <laughs> Before we went off on that <laughs> in Evolution Studios and VR. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was kind of made me, what made me think about it is like, uh, you know, like you said, if they do go that route, that would definitely be anti-consumer. So I think it would just... Uh, you know, kind of confirm what I've been feeling personally, that they kind of have been a little less consumer-friendly as of late. I mean, it's, you know, I can't say for sure that they, you know, they've gone totally in that direction, but uh, to me personally, it does seem that way a little bit, you know, 
like I said, there's there's more than just uh, the VR pricing. It's also like the PS2 games price and other stuff. But uh, I don't know. Hopefully, I'm wrong. It's, uh, yeah. But uh, I don't know. Uh, you guys have anything else to add or? No, I think that's about it. I, like, uh, kind of in conclusion, I, I'm against a PlayStation 4.5. I think uh, I think they should just ride out PS4 and um, keep that goodwill building and then really blow yeah, people with Yeah, so PS5. you're, like, against uh, the idea of, like, a half console. Like, not a... F Any type of fracturing the audience Okay, seems yeah. like a... No matter what good it does, I think it, it doesn't okay, do enough. Okay, yeah, that, that's what I thought you were trying to say. But if it was like a uh, just a a 4K ready version of the PS4, would you be okay with that? Yeah, I mean, if it was just a basically a visuals thing, like about playing, you know, mm -hmm. movies and stuff. I mean, why not? What's the big deal? But I think if if you separate between the two, like any type of uh, game capabilities really i think that's yep. just a mistake i think you just keep it keep it uh standard that's what game, console gamers love they like the standard that's how i feel too they, yep. they that's the one thing they don't want to do is to you know segregate the the market you know um but yeah i guess that's about it um thanks for listening everybody we will talk to you next time